Economic consequences of the shutdown showdown. The shutdown nearing the one month mark and one sector feeling the pinch, real estate. Joining us right now to talk more about that is Rogers Healy and Associates Real Estate Owner, Rogers Healy, along with Marcus and Millichap CEO, Hassan Naji. Good to see you, gentlemen. Thanks very much for joining us. Morning. Thanks morning. for having us. Hassan, kick us off here. Do you see an impact on real estate? How would you assess the market today? Sure. On the commercial uh, real estate side of the equation, there's been minimal impact. Uh, the approval process by banks has been slowed because of the government shutdown. Certain government agencies like HUD and SBA are affecting affordable apartment lending and uh, small business lending. So there's, there's been some effect without a doubt, but it's not enough to really uh, counter the macro favorable environment. Um, mostly the uh, sentiment on consumers is what our clients are, are worried about. And this economy has shown such incredible resilience, 300,000 plus jobs in December in light of the Fed being very aggressive and then changing its tone, uh, the trade wars and, and tariff issues that we've been discussing. All those things have weighed, but the resilience of the economy has really propelled commercial real estate forward. We're coming into this year with great levels of demand. We're still seeing very strong leasing activity, which is an indication of, of job creation and continued optimism about economic growth. And uh, there's plenty of demand on the investor side, especially right. now that the interest rates have come in about half a basis point. R Rogers, how do you see it? And if you're in the residential area, what should consumers expect? Sure. So the, the biggest thing we're dealing with right now is fear. And I think that people are starting to get that like pitter patter in their chest, like something's about to go wrong again. But we haven't seen a direct impact as far as the ability to close. The people that are working with you know, government employees are, are dealing with that because obviously they can't go and, and get their financing approved. So they're worried that their interest rates are going to you know, expire because their lock is going gonna, is gonna to go out. But yeah, our biggest thing right now is psychological. And it's just like anything else. It's people are just waiting for you know, the next bad, bad thing to happen. So we have to educate and train our clients and tell them, hey, it's okay. You're still going to get approved. It might be a little bit of a delay. But the biggest thing we deal with right now is just the, the, mental, the mental anguish. So, Rogers, Lindsey Bell here. Uh, yeah. It sounds like you're, both of you are more concerned about consumer sentiment than anything else. You're not seeing a major impact in the, on the real estate market right now. But are there subsectors or regions that maybe are being impacted, like the Washington, D.C. area, or maybe in Utah where there's a lot of IRS yeah. employees? Yeah, sure. I mean, so the, the first thing I think of when someone... Sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was just saying, the first thing sorry, I think of ahead. when someone asks, you know, who's going to be affected by the shutdown it's government employees trying to buy real estate or sell real estate and you know that that's just pretty black and white but yeah we, we've seen that in dc we've seen it in places like hawaii we've seen it in places like in south texas but yeah that's that's definitely been a thing the um uh, matt slap here one quick question uh generationally we keep hearing about the the new generation of younger folks younger than me certainly are into this whole idea that they just kind of like they rent they share, they borrow, they go online to get what they need. Are we seeing a generational shift in the real estate market where younger folks just want to rent, have short-term deals, and not buy houses? Yeah, I mean, so we're we, clearly we've talked seeing about this that. before. Go ahead, please. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> we're clearly seeing yes. that in the apartment market. We've been seeing it for quite some time. And it is the younger renter preferring to rent and be flexible in order to chase jobs. But it's also the lifestyle renter. Uh, the older uh, aging baby boomers that are selling their homes and actually preferring to rent, especially in urban areas, and that's been a big trend. And on the retail front, there's no doubt that e-commerce is making a profound change, but brick-and-mortar retail is really reshaping, and there's new demand being created, such as Amazon and Whole Foods now uh, going in to occupy some of the um, uh, darkened uh, Sears stores. So there's a lot of change going on in brick-and-mortar retail. Yeah, there sure is, because you've got retail uh, companies finding new purpose for empty malls across the country. Google announced that it's going to be redeveloping that dead shopping mall into an office space. Um, what do you think about that, Rogers? As far as what they're going to do as far as retrofitting Well, is that spaces? going to be a catalyst for others? I mean, is that going to be, is that, is yeah. that going to be a, a, any uh, trigger for movement elsewhere? Yeah, so it's just about getting creative with stuff that's already there. I read something the other day about how old, uh, like, car dealerships that are going out of business, they're going to go and turn parking lots and car dealerships into apartment complexes. So, yeah, we're, we're going to see these kind of shifts. And, and like Hassan said, I mean, it's just about creating new trends and making use of what's already there. And companies like Google and other major, you know, Fortune 50 or Fortune 10 conglomerates are going to go and find a way 
like to repurpose like the ballpark and here in, in Dallas, Texas, we thought Amazon was going to come here and one of their potential headquarters was going to be the old ballpark at Arlington. So you're going to see this kind of stuff happen. And, you know, I think this is the beginning of a new trend. Hassam, it's Dagan McDowell. I, I wanted to ask you, we were talking about retail and, and shopping malls and brick and mortar stores. Is there another leg down potentially? I noticed that Nordstrom earlier in the week said that at its full price stores, ritzy, not quite as ritzy as maybe a Bergdorf Goodman, but same store sales only rose by three tenths of one percent. The headline was Nordstrom has a rich people problem. And I wonder if this is another leg down for real estate, um, retail real estate, with problems now developing among the luxury retailers. Dagan, there's uh, clearly pressure on uh, more retailers, uh, similar to what we've seen with uh, Sears and Toys R Us and others. Uh, but it, it, isn't, it isn't really a broad-based, uh, you know, general trend. It has to do with the retailer itself. Nordstrom is having a, a merchandising problem and, and creating <coughs> energy and reason for people to come in the store problem, not so much a rich problem. They're doing very well online, by the way. The omni-channel, the combined uh, e-commerce and brick-and-mortar retail is proving to be very effective. There is more pain to come, but there is a lot of innovation that's happening, especially as related to entertainment and dining out. Those are the two drivers of foot traffic uh, going forward for retail. Very quickly, in real estate residential, are you expecting prices to come down, Hassam? Actually, I'm not because uh, we've not overbuilt housing. Okay. Uh, so prices, uh, I think, are going to slow down, but I don't think there's a major correction underway for uh, home prices. Rogers, real quick, what do you think? I love Hassan and his answer, so we're, we're good. <laughs> <laughs> Rogers, Hilly, and Hassan Naji, thanks very much, gentlemen, for joining us. We Thank will see you soon.